I'm Kale from ProGraphics.ca and today we're going to review how to install one of our graphics kits. Basically we're going to be doing the uh, right side when you're sitting on the sled. This is the main piece, upper piece, top piece, and then the lower piece is right here. When you get your kit, the, you'll see that there's some small cuts in the vinyl that are just around the perimeter of each piece. I always put the big one on first. Uh, these lines are all meant to line up. Uh, this one especially right here on this kit, but each kit's different. So what we're going to do is we're basically just going to put our hand under here and if you kind of pop this up, you'll see that we can get that and start pulling that up. One thing I want to talk about before we install is the adhesive uh, on these uh, this product that we use. It's a 3M product and it uses a technology that 3M's developed called Comply. You'll notice uh, in the liner paper as well as in the adhesive, there's a crisscross pattern. What that pattern does is um, it allows us to float the, um, the piece of uh, vinyl around. Um, it's not going to stick instantly. This is still the high-tech adhesive, so it is going to stay on your panel. But that extra little crisscross pattern actually acts as a little barrier that won't allow the, the adhesive to stick instantly. We've eliminated the need to use uh, the wet method when you're installing on the smooth plastics um, and it works really well so it makes things a lot easier to install. Uh, this stuff has a laminate on it. It's fairly thick so it's you don't want to pull and stretch it but you can you can literally pull this off in one piece. Now the one thing you don't want to do is let this fold in and, and touch itself. Um, it's not impossible to get it apart if that happens, but um, just be careful. All the pieces are manageable. This is the biggest piece that you will get in your kit. I'm going to use this point right here as my reference. So I'm just going to touch that with my thumb, and then I want this line to follow the top. I want to follow that exact edge there. If you get that there, everything else will fall in place, and it'll, it'll all fit perfectly. You'll notice the rest of it's all just kind of flopping around here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to squeegee from the middle. I'm going to squeegee straight down. Now let's let's say, oh darn, I got it in the wrong place. Or I got a wrinkle in it, or I got a problem. I can pull this back up. It's not stuck. You don't need to, to panic and think that you've ruined your decal or that it won't be able to move again. Um, after we've heat gunned it, you don't want to try and pull anything up. So the key here is to work from the center out in all directions. So I'm going to work myself down. I'm going to go this way first. Um, one other key and important um, part is these little creases, even though they are small, they seem small, you don't want to tent over them. See how there's a, there's a space in there? If I was to stick this here and then force that down, what will happen is this is going to want to release uh, over time. Now what you want to do instead is we want to work it on the flat panel on each flat surface. So we're going to work it right up to that crease. We want to do our best not to stretch it across that little area. And by doing that, the vinyl is in its natural state. It isn't stretched and it will stay in that natural state. So then this, this part here has a wee bit of a curve to it. So again, when, when you get into that, you want, to, you want to spread it out from the center. So half moon motion and if you you want to use liberal pressure here, you don't want to use so much pressure that you're, you know, digging into the vinyl and damaging it. But at the same time, don't be don't be light about it. This adhesive has to be pushed into this little texture that's on the panel, so we do need to work it pretty good. And we're going to go over this whole thing with a heat gun later. So as long as we've got it all smooth, there's no you can see there's no no creases, no bubbles, no no nothing there. Same thing. I'm just gonna. Work it from the center out. And you'll notice I'm only squeegeeing about two inches at a time. I'm not going in a great big long stroke. That's another way to kind of keep yourself from getting into trouble with wrinkles. So now again, same issue. This little part here, I've seen even on the earlier installations that we did a few years ago, we've learned this the hard way. You know, you get in a hurry and you, you stretch it over that, so you've got a space there and you push that in there. You've got to make sure that it follows the surface of the panel. So we're just going to run the squeegee right up into that corner. Even if you've got to use your finger, make sure it's stuck down there before you squeegee the rest of it. And I'm going to use my thumb there. 
them there. And there's our first piece. Now, this piece here, in the end, we're probably going to trim that off. Um, there is a, s a minimal amount of trimming that's needed. It's impossible to get these things on the panel perfect every time. So even I have to do some trimming. You can see here, this is hanging over. I have two options here. I can wrap it around the corner. Like that one isn't hanging over too bad, so I can. But you can see when I get up to this corner here, it's going to want to fold in on itself. So I may end up going back in the end and trimming that off. What you want to do is avoid wrapping it around corners the where it will shrink back and, and lift because that's going to cause you problems. Okay, so the second piece we're going to use is the lower panel. This is the XRS kit, so you get your, your custom race number on there. You can pick whatever number you want to put on. And again, now there's a point of reference that we want to line up. This bottom edge, it goes above that line. And this maybe takes a uh, couple of tries sometimes to get it lined up. And we also want to make sure that we're inside the edge here. Now there is some overlap here. Depending on the kit, um, I will usually go in and, and trim it back a wee bit. Like you can see, this is going to overlap my stripe. So I'm actually going to go in, I'm going to trim that back after. So don't squeeze it down over there. And I might as well trim while I'm here. Now when you trim, if you've got a sharp knife, you don't have to press really hard. If you don't have a steady hand, you can take a piece of tape. It's almost like using a ruler. So I can put my piece of tape along there. Just enough pressure to cut through. And then you can go over it again with your, with your squeegee or your, your finger. As I was saying earlier, this hangs down. Now that's a bad corner. Snow is going to be coming at it. So what I typically do is I just run it out the end here. Oops, and I cut it up. This panel, you can see some, some kits, the pattern will go right through here, but there is a cut. You can see here, this piece comes up. You can just throw that away. Now, key is here, pull slowly. Don't right, you reef on this because this is a really narrow band of, of vinyl, these two. So you just want to take your time, pull it up. And again, see, there's the little latch. Now, this is the trickiest one to do there is no space between this edge and this edge. They are meant to butt. I try to line up the, uh, the line. And then I, again, I don't stick it down right away, but you can see that one lines up right there. Just touch that a little bit just to get it there. Now I want to look at the positioning of the rest of it before I commit to that and make sure that the rest is going to work. So, so if I just run my finger along here, I don't want to stretch that. See how that's got a little bit of a, a wobble in it there? And I want to make sure that this part here is all going to go down flat. Uh, the other side is much easier because there's not a hole in the middle of it, so it's just one big piece. So I'm going to just work it with my finger all the way along there. So once I've got that where I want it, the rule is usually to work from the middle out. In this case, I'm going to work from my edge here, and I'm going to work towards my vent. So I'm going to work it up just kind of around there. And I would recommend using your thumb and just lightly sticking it down first. Just go around here with your finger or your thumb and you see how that just kind of fits around there nicely. Anyway, so once I've got that part, this part's easy. We've got our little divot here. Work it towards that, towards that little divot because it'll do the same thing on us. It'll shrink back. And then once I've got that stuck with my finger, I can actually go back with my squeegee. What, the, what your finger doesn't do, it's too squishy, so it won't actually work the stuff into the, uh, the texture. This will get, allow you to put extra pressure on it. Okay, so that's that part. And usually this hole lines up close. I mean, you got to remember there's a big clip that goes over this, so if, if it doesn't line up perfectly for you, don't be afraid to trim it bigger. It's covered anyways. Make sure there's a little slit right here, and the purpose for that is just to let it fit right over top of that corner. There's that piece, just like so. Last piece for the side panel. So all I'm going to do 
is I'm going to line up the, the top edge, top corner, and here. And then again, you might need to move it around a wee bit. Although it looks like it should be a straight line, you'll notice the seam is going to have a bit of a curve to it. Um, again, we overlap it just to hold everything together. And then I can, still working from the center basically, because I'm still working it out towards the corner. Depending on, on how you've installed your kit, there is sometimes a need to trim this area. I gotta say that fit pretty good together, so I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, again, I'll probably come back here and I'll trim this. Run your piece of tape along if you, if you wanna trim it. This area here might just trim this little spot. But uh, all in all, this, uh, this panel went on really well. The last thing we have to do once we've got everything on the panel is we, we want to heat gun it. We have some squeegees that we actually use um, just Velcro. The, the fuzzy part of Velcro, it's uh, got the adhesive tape on it. If you've got some of that or you can buy it, it's cheap. It, it glides better over the, over the vinyl. When you heat the vinyl, it, it has a tendency to become a little bit sticky. So when you're using a hard squeegee, you may find that it's, it's hard and you're afraid you might damage it. This will get around that. You don't want to hold the heat gun in one spot. If you want it to be hot enough, I'll just do a little area here and I'll show you what happens. Now what you will find is when it gets hot enough, it will actually start, you'll see the vinyl texture start to change. You'll see a little bit of uh, the texture from the, the panel show through the vinyl. You don't want to get it to the point where it's melting right on, but you will be able to tell when you've used enough heat. And go over these panels and go over them a, a good couple of times. That's one thing with this, this new adhesive is it does take a little bit of extra heat to get them bonded onto this texture plastic. Smooth panels aren't as, as big a problem, but do go over them. Anyway, so once you've heat gunned, when you heat gun, go around the corners, especially around the edges, um, you know, the middle is important, but all of your seams, all of your edges are very important to have those bonded because if, you know, you get in deep snow, that's the first area that's going to kind of kick up. So there is one side panel installed.